Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Okay, Palantir has just introduced a new electric vehicle infrastructure operating system. It's really, really cool. They just put out an article about it. I'll leave it in the description. We're gonna summarize that article, try to analyze what it means, and ultimately try to see what market opportunity are they going after. Electric vehicles are a huge market opportunity. Obviously, Tesla has fundamentally changed the paradigms by which we understand electric vehicles. Old car manufacturers like GM, Toyota, Ford, they have unveiled a lot of plans to go electric. A bunch of startups like Lucid and Rivian have uh, basically captured multi-billion dollar valuations by being able to introduce their electric vehicle plans. So electric vehicles, are going to take over. Consumers really don't care about internal combustions any, a, engines anymore. Those cars aren't that smart. There's not a lot of data integrated with them. So this revolution for electric vehicles is here. Palantir is one of those companies. It's one of the companies that I enjoy investing in because I can trust that they're going to try to be at the forefront of every single technological trend that emerges. Are they going to be successful at all of them? I don't know. And I don't expect them to be successful at all of them, but I do expect them to try to integrate the best of their technologies that is proprietary to them that they have been able to develop over the past 17 years in order to scale and integrate into the new technology trends that exist. Big data is one of the biggest trends that's going to exist over the next decade because every company is going to have data, which means there's going to be literally billions of applications for how data can be integrated throughout all of our lives and throughout all the industries that we use and that we engage and participate in as citizens of a society. Electric vehicles also present a major, major opportunity because it's about transportation and it's about mobility. And all of us at one point are going to have cars or we're going to be inside of a car. We're going to be using a car over the next 10, 20 years. Like cars are not going away. So if cars have fundamentally changed from an internal combustion engine to an electric vehicle that has all this data and all this AI machine learning powering how the car operates, maybe a self-driving autonomous vehicle type of car, then there are massive, and I don't want to undermine what I'm saying. There are massive opportunities for companies to try to attack that market, not by just making the car, but by making everything that goes into what it takes to be able to make a car. There's a lot of software and a lot of infrastructure that needs to support those electric vehicles. Will Palantir be able to do it? Time will tell. But are they trying to do it based on the new thing they announced? They're going after it. So what are their plans with this electric vehicle operating system? The first thing to understand is that the interstate highway, the thing that was created in the mid 20th century, that big system across the entire United States that the government invested a lot of money in so that we could drive cars to and from work to see our family, to go on vacations. That was a massive, massive investment and it really paid off. It was a really good thing because Americans could then jump in their car and then go from like Florida to Mississippi on a road trip and like actually be a more United States of America because there was something connecting every single state to each other. They write that charging networks and EVs offer the promise of clean and cheap transportation, but a massive infrastructure project. They present both old and new problems that require innovative solutions. So what is a charging network? When you think of an electric vehicle, an electric vehicle ultimately has batteries, usually lithium ion batteries. And for those batteries to be uh, productive and useful for someone who's driving an electric car, they need to be charged because obviously there's no gas that goes into the car. This means that most cars on average, and I, I could be wrong on this, but I think like around 300 to 350 miles is what um, an electric vehicle can really go. Now, there might be some high-end Tesla models that go a little bit above that, but that's from what I understand. So if you're talking about 300, 350 miles, after those miles are up or, you know, like at least 30, 40 before that, you got to get to stop and you got to get some charging into your battery. There is not a connected infrastructure across the United States yet that makes that seamless, that makes that easy, makes that possible if you don't have a Tesla, because Tesla has some of those networks, but there are obviously companies that, that are working on electric vehicles that people will own that are not Tesla. So there needs to be an integrated system across the United States, just like there was an integrated system across the United States for highways. It didn't matter what brand of a car you bought, you could use the highway. If we truly believe that electric vehicles are the future, not just Tesla, then there needs to be some type of universal infrastructure that operates that connects all electric vehicles towards each other and the ability to actually charge when they're on the highway. So one unique thing that Palantir says is that unlike the federal project of the interstate highway system, the electrification of American roads requires a new platform to enable decentralized public-private collaboration involving many different stakeholders. Public-private collaboration, meaning one company is not going to be able to do this. The public uh, governments and municipalities and towns are going to have to be able to invest to be able to make this reality. But there's also going to have to be innovation from tech startups and companies that are actually able to solve this problem because it's, it's a difficult problem. Energy utilities and city authorities to network operators 
retailers, and more. Charging networks also need to be built in response to local conditions and to provide equitable access to the benefits of electric mobility. With its ability to layer multiple internal and external sources of data under a single operating picture, the EV infrastructure OS can make this vision a reality. So let's break that down right here. So when Palantir is saying that there's going to be a single operating picture, what they're saying is there's going to be a centralized platform, a screen in front of you that is going to have internal and external forms of data that are absolutely crucial, integral, and relevant to electric vehicles and how electric vehicles operate to allow, to allow charging networks to actually persist and become integrated within the fabric of a local community and then obviously a national community within the entire United States. Now, here is the kicker. Weijo, which was Palantir's, uh, one of their earliest Palantir SPAC investments, and uh, you guys probably saw this coming just based on the title of this video. It makes so much sense that Palantir and Weijo are working on this project. SPAC investments are Palantir's ability to like invest a bunch of money in these high growth tech companies that aren't super big yet, like they haven't made it yet, but they're using data to drive every single outcome of the industry that they're trying to attack. Weijo is a basically electric car vehicle data aggregator that's trying to create the best data insights for car manufacturers so that they're able to uh, understand how to make better electric vehicles and how to better integrate them within their supply chains and within all their other business operations. So what Palantir says in this paragraph is the OS integrates internal open source and third party data through Palantir Foundry for operational decision making with the option to add Weijo's robust connected vehicle data, including billions of near real-time data points. That is all connected through Weijo's proprietary software. Together, Palantir software and Weijo's data enables companies to expand into new geographies and manage infrastructure through an integrated platform for optimal decision-making. With advanced site selection and network operations uh, tools, any business or organization can use the OS to build, scale, and operate first-class EV charging infrastructure. This is the kicker. Palantir is not going to be making electric vehicle charging stations. There's going to be a ton of other companies doing that. Palantir wants to be the underlying foundational element towards how those electric vehicle uh, charging station manufacturers are able to actually build charging stations in communities and then obviously in cities, governments, etc. in a meaningful way. So first of all, when it says the OS integrates internal open source and third party data, through Palantir Foundry. That means that Palantir's flagship product, Foundry, which analyzes and synthesizes data at scale, is going to be able to be licensed to these electric vehicle uh, charging station manufacturers in order to be able to figure out how to best effectively make these electric vehicle charging stations. Now, when it says internal open source and third party data, this is where the decentralization comes into place. So this is when other car manufacturers or other uh, electric car vehicle data aggregators outside of uh, Weijo, which Weijo is a pretty big one, right? That's why Palantir invested in them and they're a pretty innovative one. They're going to be able to take their data and integrate it into this central operating system so kind of think of it like um like you, have you ever been to a uh, like a like a what is it a potluck right and a bunch of people bring a lot of food and then it makes like the meal a lot better because there's so much diversity of food in this case palantir has the central operating system which is foundry and it's going to be able to work with electrical electric vehicle car manufacturers uh, sorry electric vehicle charging station manufacturers across the entire united states to be able to integrate data not only from other AI, machine learning, electrical vehicle, car data aggregators, but also from municipalities, from cities, from towns, from all these different data points and all these different people that have data to provide in order to make the software really phenomenal. So for example, when Palantir said above that uh, public-private collaboration involving many different stakeholders, energy utilities, city authorities, network operators, retailers, and more, that's what they're talking about when it comes to third-party data and entering this OS. So energy utilities, meaning if you're getting electric charging, that charging is going to have to come from somewhere. This is like the PSE and Gs of the world. They're going to be involved providing data. Uh, city authorities, right? These people have to be able to regulate these things so that they're effective, so that they actually save people time and money and it's not overpricing people. That's going to be really important. You have network operators. These are people that kind of control the entire ability for the city to operate. Retailers, there's so, uh, retailers meaning like if you're at a mall, right? And if there's an electric charging station at a mall, how is the mall going to be integrated with electric charging station, not only from a physical perspective, but also from the electricity that may be coming from the mall. There's all these different uh, centers of data that need to be included in a centralized operating system in order for an electric vehicle charging station to make sense. Now, what does this mean from a business perspective? To me, if we believe that electric vehicles are going to be the future, and we believe that it is inevitable that there's going to be infrastructure that is necessary to support electric vehicles and the charging stations that are uh, going to be required in order for electric vehicles to actually be able to be usable across the United States, then that means this is a pretty big opportunity. Because if we 
believe in 30 years there's not going to be gas stations anymore and there's a very good chance in the next 30 years the internal combustion engine cars are just not going to exist anymore like car manufacturers are not going to manufacture them anymore then that means every single gas station that you have uh, that you have near you today right um and and if you press again gas station near me you might have like six or seven literally a couple miles from you all of those are going to be replaced all of those are going away. We're not going to be using gas anymore, which means if we're not using gas anymore, there's no need for gas stations, then there's going to have to be electric vehicle charging stations that exist. All of those charging stations have to be highly localized and highly customizable towards the specific area that they're in. And on top of being localized, because gas is easy to sell, right? It's just gas. It doesn't have to be localized. Um, the, the, the only thing that is to be really localized about gas is prices, but electric vehicle charging stations have a lot more data, as we talked about, because of the inherent nature uh, and the fact that there's electricity there. So not only does it have to be localized, but it also has to be nationalized because it has to be able to exist across state boundaries, right? So if you're traveling from like New York to Connecticut, you need to be able to safely travel and know that if you stop at an electric vehicle charging uh, station, you will be fine, which means there needs to be a glue that stick those things together, right? So if you go to Shell in New York for your gas and you go to BP in Connecticut for your gas, it doesn't matter. It's the same gas, right? You, like, you know you're going to be fine. For here, the stations have to be different in the electrical vehicle world, but they also have to be integrated. And that's the fundamental challenge that is presented here. And the way to solve that challenge in Palantir's proposition is to have an operating system that allows these manufacturers of charging stations to be able to use uh, data at scale, to be able to integrate all the millions of data points that we talked about within a central operating system, and then to be able to allow that to drive operational decision making, meaning allowing that data to tell them what to do so that they can do it and not have to worry about figuring out how to do it. Now, if this works, this can be big because this market is pretty huge, not just the car market for electric vehicles, but the actual market that is required in order to charge those electric vehicles. If Palantir Foundry, like let's say, let's take ExxonMobil, BP, and Shell of today, and let's just call them the electric ExxonMobil, BP, and Shell of 10, 15 years from now. If Palantir is the operating system, working with all those companies to be able to make this make sense, and it's not that crazy to say because Palantir is already working with oil and gas companies. They're working with Kinder Morgan, uh, which is an $11 billion per year energy company that primarily works with oil and gas. Uh, I did a video on that. I'll link that in the description. That means that it's not crazy to say that Palantir working with oil and gas companies using their software to help make their operations and their mining of oil more effective would be exactly the same thing, but in a different world for electric vehicle charging manufacturers in order for them to be able to deliver to deliver electricity at scale, just like Kinder Morgan is delivering oil to their stakeholders at scale. The network effect is super important here. So as more and more data gets added to this entire operating system for electric charging manufacturers, they're going to be able to use that data to figure out how to effectively create more charging stations, build on top of this operating system. Again, this operating system basically being a portal into how they're going to be able to generate revenue and maximize demand in different areas and locations in order to build charging stations throughout the entire country, which will lead to a more united integrated um, country that uses electric vehicles at scale. So those are my thoughts. Palantir just unveiled the electric vehicle infrastructure operating system. I am bullish on this, not only because I see a business opportunity, but because they're doing new things. They're innovating in new sectors. This is a company that is going after every different sector, trying to use data to integrate their operations and their operating system within every different sector and truly try to become the most important software company in the world. They're showing the SPAC investments make sense. It starts to make a lot more sense why they even made the SPAC investment into Weijo because of new integrated partners that they were going to create like uh, an EV infrastructure operating system. And if charging stations are going to be a huge thing and businesses are going to make new charging stations because every gas station is going to go obsolete in the next 20, 30 years, if Palantir is at the forefront of that software revolution, i.e. a portal for businesses to actually be able to create those charging stations, it could be big. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Looking forward to reading them. I'll see you guys in the next one.